Good afternoon, everyone. China's Northeast Heilongjiang, first ever red warning for such cold weather. Rare ice fog, minus 43 degrees Celsius. Area on the map, that green circle. These are the areas I called for crop losses due to shifting weather patterns in China. Bullseye, same exact spot. A couple months back, China, food inflation 9%. Grand solar minimum forecast moving over the next 30 years. We know how the monsoon shifts across Asia when we're in the 11-year solar cycle. Now let's multiply that 400-year cycle. We should be seeing signs all over the place if this is really happening. Teramisu snow is a blizzard in a dust storm sweep across western China. Gansu unseasonable dust storms, which usually occur in spring, now occurring in winter. In the history of China, absolutely affected by grand solar minimums. Great Wall Project, severe disease outbreaks, loss of leaderships, revolutions, and you'll understand why they were so focused on the heavens. The Big Dipper, Beidou Qixing, Draco. And when we see these planetary alignments, exactly the same as they were in 79 AD, you'll understand why China's back's against the wall right now. And during these uncertain times, I've teamed up with My Patriot Supply Long-Term Food Storage, a nice affordable starter kit, two-week food supply, 1,500 calories per day, breakfast, lunch, and dinners, plus the four-gallon storage containers included in that. This is a good first step in getting more self-sufficient. And if you click through the Prepare with Adapt 2030 page in My Patriot Supply, you can get this starter kit for 75 bucks. Please remember there's a limit of two per household in this special offer. Record cold temperatures, Moha. Rare ice fog, minus 43 degrees Celsius. That's 46 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. This is in Northeast China, Heilongjiang, and it was the first ever for this city, what is termed a red warning for extreme cold weather, frostbite, death, etc. to follow if you get stuck out too long. I'm liking the snow-covered roofs. This comes off Electroverse, following the Chinese media. And you know when it gets that cold, everybody's throwing out piping hot cups of tea to watch it spray and turn to instant ice crystals. That's fun. But take a look at this rare ice fog that has enveloped the entire area. It covers everything that's standing above ground. Of course, when you're out in these temperatures, the eyelashes, breathing's very difficult, you need to wear a mask because your nasal passages will freeze. That's how cold it got. This is extremely rare. Extreme record cold. This would be expected in the grand solar minimum. So here's the forecast going out. Over these next 30 years, we're heading into a prolonged lack of solar activity, which is going to usher in another grand solar minimum. And then you need to add into this the summer precipitation, otherwise known as the monsoon, and how this moves north and south on the regular 11-year solar cycle. It's been mapped out over China, East Asia, they know exactly where the moisture bands are going to move, all based on the 11-year solar cycle. Now, we have to bring this up a magnitude of order because we're heading into a 400-year cycle itself based on solar activity, the grand solar minimum. So you have to imagine, if they already know where these moisture bands are going to move, especially the East Asian monsoon band, and let me wide that out so you can see exactly where the difference is in precipitation. It's already been mapped out. Now you just need to intensify it and take it a few degrees more north or south because of the 400-year cycle, not the 11-year cycle. They've already done some of these historical reconstruction of the droughts. I mean, take it back to 1638, 1792, 1876. So also you can see where the droughts occurred during these same grand solar minimum eras. And now we're getting the record cold in the exact same spots that I had forecast just based on these charts that you just saw, this last bevy of information. That green circle on the chart there is where they had the extreme cold that was the first time ever recorded in the city. And this is the crop lost area forecast that I put out earlier this year. Notice the red where it says Heilongjiang Bullseye. That's in the exact same spot. I'm also looking for losses uh, around Nanjing, Anhui, Henan due to the floods that have been coming through there persistently year after year now. 
So the red circle, a little bit below 35 north, that area is going to have difficulty growing due to too much moisture. Where in the northern part, it's going to be too much cold and drought. And North Korea is experiencing a mega drought as well. So that whole area up there is just a repeating cycle. If I can forecast it out, the Chinese government for sure knows what's happening. And here we go. Cold's dipping even lower across the planet. Now we got Beijing and also Shanghai. Coldest on record so far. Shanghai, it snows there. It does get cold, but not this cold this early. And the AccuWeather quick glimpse, 18 Fahrenheit below normal. We saw that across North America as well. Canada, United States twice this year. Now it's over in Asia. Soon to be Europe as well. Now you can see the grand solar minimum fingerprints all around you. Now with all the monsoon changes in moisture, precipitation patterns, wind anomalies in the jet stream, you would also expect, I don't know, out of season events across China as well. Unseasonable dust storms roll through Gansu and in November. You got to realize dust storms are normally a springtime event. Even the meteorologists are saying, whoa, this is completely out of season. Spring, not winter, incredibly strange. And then again, we get this dust storm slamming with the blizzard, and they called it Teramisu snow, yellow snow, vast sandstorms colliding with massive blizzard front. This is over Xinjiang, which is far out west, right border with Gansu. Now, Gansu, with that dust storm, got to realize Gansu, also desert area, received five feet of snow in a storm. So these areas, when they melt, those riverbeds that haven't flowed in thousands of years are going to start refilling again. Incredible timing, massive winds, heavy dust, low temperatures, and a blizzard to accompany it. The pictures kind of speak for themselves. So in my opinion, this is, would qualify as one of those changes that you would be looking for as an atmospheric change. Again, take a look at the airport. I don't know how those aircraft are even going to take off in that. So knowing that China has a very difficult time during grand solar minimums, I've done this chart a couple of years ago where I overlaid the collapse of Chinese dynasties with the dips in temperature, otherwise known as grand solar minimums. Now, I was very precise on the end dates. Now, I understand the chart could run a little bit further into a dipping cooling elsewhere. So where the bar is, is the actual end date as quantified by Chinese historians as the end of the date of that dynasty, the end of an emperor's leadership matches pretty well with the collapse. Now, China's very susceptible to grand solar minimum because it's a continental weather pattern. So, of course, they're going to be greatly affected. So is North America. Like the east coast of the United States, east coast of Canada is going to experience the exact same thing. Continental weather patterns that are affected by the grand solar minimum. Here, the new dynasty in China. This takes you back to 1400 AD. This is right in the wolf minimum. We've got the Yuan dynasty collapsing around 1380 Zheng He, the famous explorer, out around 1405. But you can see where those arrows divide. The severe diseases entering into, and it looks like the height of that wolf minimum. Depleted immune systems, not enough agricultural production. And then what happens? The Great Wall. So you have to ask yourself, why did the Mongol invasions really intensify at this time to the point where they needed to build the wall? Grand solar minimum, I wonder if they weren't able to grow enough food or their animal husbandry was affected, so they started to move to different areas to look for food as well. If you put those two and two together, this makes perfect sense. Already China experiencing 9% vegetable price rises, driven surge, food inflation, extreme weather. That was in September. It's continued since then. The, the losses are continuing to amplify in China. And then we start to see all these other saber rattlings and all these things to do with food in China. Sorghum, tariffs, the kill off of all the pigs now to due to some disease that has come from Africa. It's an uncurable new kind of swine flu. And then to put the cherry on top here, once you start to take a look at why the Chinese emperors were so focused on the stars, specifically the Big Dipper. Even in China, it's called the Beidou Qixing, like the cult of the Big Dipper. They knew that the mandate from heaven was removed when different cycles repeated. And it's just so interesting, the mandate from heaven. And they're looking at the Big Dipper. And everything from the stars to our planet affects our terrestrial system, weather-wise, food production-wise. They understood it. That's why they were so focused on it. They had entire branches of the astrological emperor's forces to check out the stars. 
The Qinglong, that was a name for a Birkeley current that they understood how the flows cosmically from outside our solar system affected our star and then the Earth itself. Notice 79 AD above and 2024 below. Now, if you were a Chinese emperor looking for repeating cycles and you saw this exact planetary geometry coming up, would you not look back at 79 AD and see what was going on at that time? If Vesuvius was erupting, Roman Empire in decline due to they couldn't feed their people, new global religions taking hold, and that's all just a coincidental time frame? I think not. So when you see the intensification of the grand solar minimum, understand China's back is against the wall. That's why they're in Africa looking to grow food. That's why you're seeing all this saber rattling. The power base in China realizes it is nearly finished unless it does something drastic to hold that power and feed the people of China. What links will they go to to feed the people so they're not overthrown? Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. If you like this type of information, 30 minutes at a time, mini Ice Age Conversations podcast anywhere you can find a podcast hosted across the net. Please remember to sign up for the newsletter. Just head over to oilseedcrops.org. Shake your mouse around there for about 10 seconds. The box will pop up. Enter your email. You'll have to double opt in to get that subscription. And I'll send you something about once a month.